Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I'm going to give you my best tips on how to start making money as a photographer. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramely. I am a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France and Los Angeles. And I make one tutorial per week. Click here if you want to get all the raw files from all my past episodes. We're talking thousands, hundreds of raw files from all over the world for free. All you have to do is subscribe to my newsletter and you will get lots of newsletters from me and a lot of cool free stuff. And click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to talk to you about uh, making money as a photographer. That's a request I get a lot and I really sat down and tried to figure out the best ways or at least what has worked the best for me is to make money as a photographer. So let's go, let me show you my best tips to make money as a photographer. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, so let's talk money. Now, just a little warning before we start. This is my best tips on starting to make money as a photographer. If you've got any tips or if, if your experience is different, feel free to share your knowledge in the comments below this video. All right. I get a lot of emails of people saying, oh, I'm passionate about photography. I want to start making money. How can I do it? And I thought, okay, I really need to make a video like with my best tips on what has worked for me over the last 10 years on making money and making as a living. Because if you start making money as a photographer, then it can become your full-time job. And then you, you know, then you spend your whole day doing what you love, which is really cool. So let's get started. Tip number one. Now, tip number one might be seem a bit silly, but Master your skills and shoot until you are satisfied that your photos give yourself and others a good emotional impact. It's important that, uh, you know, you are at a level of professionalism that, you know, people will want to work with you. So, you know, and you know when it is, you know, when you start putting all these photos out there and like everybody's going, oh, wow, we really want well, like you do and you're like proud of yourself. You know, you've reached this point. You, you know, there is a certain, you know, uh, pro level that you need to have to become a professional photographer. And it, it really varies from people to one another. But I would say a good method to know if you're there is like, is you work constantly getting really good reviews and are you really happy about it? There is no limit. I mean, I'm always introverted when I see some other people photographer, uh, some other photography that I find really awesome. And I'm like, oh, I'm not there yet, you know. But I know that I'm a level that, you know, a lot of clients around the world will still like. So just make sure you are at that level. If not, just keep training. I've got lots of tutorials. Scott Kelby's got amazing tutorials on Kelby, you know, Kelby1.com. Uh, there is a lot of resources out there so that you really master your art until you can really create emotional impact. I would say that's really the number one tip. Number two. Number two is have a professional looking website with a maximum of 20 photos per category. Only use your best work. Like I get a lot of emails also every day with people oh check out my website and on the website there is like very professional work and then there is family photos and, or there is some photos which are not as professional. Any professional photographer that's really making a living out of his, uh, of, of his art only has top of the top, uh, you know, just best of the best of his work on his website and not many. Each section like interior design, 10 photos, 20 photos, you know, portrait, 20 photos not too much photos and just the best of the best. So personally, I have two websites. I've got Squarespace where I have surgeremedyphotos.com, which is like what I use as my uh, sort of portfolio, you know, for brands. Like it's really my professional website. And then I have another one called photosearch.net, which I made with 500px, which is a lot, there's a lot more photos, which I only show to editors that want to see more about Paris. But my first one, the first one that I really promote is one that only has about 15 photos per category, which is the one you're seeing now, sergeremelyphotos.com. Okay, tip number two. Now that's a very important one. Find a niche of professionals or business needing your service. Here is some ideas that I've seen working with yours. Hotels. Uh, now, let me talk to you about hotels. Hotels are making all their money through the web today, which was not the case five years ago. But today, all the hotels are making it through their websites, through Expedia, through Booking.com, TripAdvisor, things like this. Website is their only source of income, meaning that photos is the only thing that they can show that will 
you know, get business or not. I have had many, many occasions where I changed the photos on an hotel from okay to really splendid. And as a result, the income coming from internet multiplied by four. That happened to me many times. You're doing a great favor to a hotel to give them really nice professional photos. And it, believe me, there's many hotels around the world that don't have that yet, you know, because they didn't get the right photographer or because the owner's son's got a camera or something, you know, and they are losing so much money. I mean, of course, you don't want to cheat, but you know how it is. When you find a brochure, uh, the photo you see on a brochure is always a little bit better than the truth. You know, that's what it should be, a bit better than the truth, uh, but not completely unreal, of course. Okay, upscale real estate agencies. Uh, I haven't worked much with that, but I remember one story. There was one guy that was trying to sell a very nice house, and I, I, he has been trying to sell it for a year. I, he hired me to do the photos. I made the photos, very nice HDR photos of his beautiful Paris apartment. In 48 hours, it was sold, and I, I see a lot of real estate agency starting to realize we need to hire a photographer. Uh, if we want to be able to sell our nice house, like million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollar, so I think there's really a niche there for photographers. Events. Uh, many big companies have events all the time, and they need a photographer, you know, for what it looks like. And the best is to contact event agencies, you know, and weddings, of course. Weddings, you know, people get married all the time. Weddings is not something that I do much. I've done a couple, but weddings, I know a lot of good friend of mine are doing a very good living as a wedding photographer. So that's just some ideas that I've seen work over the last years. Okay, point number four, get a listing of those potential prospects and study the photos they already have and take notes on how you can make them better. So for example, on hotels, what I used to do is I used to go and and look at booking.coms because they have all the hotels in Paris and I would just, you know, take one district and just go through and Take a note, oh, this hotel looks kind of cool, it's a four star, but his photos are like, I could do better than that. So, you know, I would just find what his number is on Google and I would make a listing like this. I would spend really hours of having like hundreds of hotels to call. Or I used to do that with the yellow pages too, you know, but it's good to study a little bit. The idea is you need to get a listing of, you know, either hotels or event agencies or real estate agencies or, you know, uh, or websites that promote uh, wedding photographers and just, you know, you have to be confident in yourself that you can do better than what you see there, of course, and then propose your service. Uh, I know there's a lot of websites to promote wedding photographers, and here it's doing very well. If I wanted to get into the wedding business, what I would do is I would go on one of these websites. You know, you just Google, like, how to find a wedding photographer. You will find this sort of website that references you, and I will look at other people's work, and I would try to get be as good or better than the, the common work that's there. You know, that, that would be how I would try to get jobs into weddings. But anyways, make sure you have a big listing of potential customers. And believe me, on this planet, there is a lot of hotels and a lot of real estate agencies and a lot of companies doing events, lots. Next. Now, this is probably the most important one and this is the one I've seen over and over photographer fail on. I don't know if you saw this movie called The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith, and that's why I put this photo there. I'm a big Will Smith fan. But I said 50 phone calls equals one deal. Now, this is my experience. If you are calling hotels or real estate agency, it's going to take you 50 calls to get one deal. This is what I've observed by me and other friends doing this. So just realize that if you only have 20 hotels to call, you're not going to go anywhere. You have to have big listings. And Will Smith in that movie, has a, there is a fun scene where he is basically just making phone calls uh, with a pen. He's hanging up and just making phone calls again really fast and so as not to lose time. And, and the whole concept is like he was just making more phone calls than anybody else. And that's why he would have more lead. And this is really the point where I've seen people having a lot of troubles because they say, oh, I'm not a salesman. I'm an art person. I'm a photographer. And I'm sorry to say, but there is no getting around it. You have to just, even if you're not a salesperson, all you have to do is propose your service. Even if you're bad at doing it, if you make this 50 call, you will get a deal. And you know why? Because right now, there is many hotels, many real estate agencies which are looking for photographers. They want to find a photographer. You just have to, they don't know you exist and they will find out how you exist 
by making this 50 phone call. It usually would take me four hours to make 50 phone calls, and this is really what I would advise you. F uh, four hours, 50 phone call, get the deal. And uh, out of all that I'm gonna tell you today, this probably is the one that's gonna get you the most business. Next, point number six, find your social media voice. Mine has always been YouTube videos, and but the thing is, I've done over 200 YouTube videos, many tutorials, and it took at least 25 videos f for my channel to become something of importance and to start attracting attention. So that's why I'm talking about a voice. It's like a pass. It's a way. It's something you have to do in time. Okay, so YouTube is an idea. Uh, you know, you could make like awesome videos with Animoto, for example, of your weddings or your interior design and just post your work there. Uh, Instagram is getting a lot more and more popular. I never got any jobs on Instagram, but I see that a lot of photographers are being followed there. Um, Facebook, no, blogging, I'm sorry, that's blogging. Blogging is good, uh, but blogging is really, well, I'll talk about that in the next slide, but you have to do regular blogging. And having a blog is really important. Uh, Facebook actually drove me quite some business. Uh, I, I made a comment with Nike and National Geographic through Facebook, so I was really happy about that. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, 500px. 500px did not get me business, but it's a great way to attract attention, and somehow attracting attention always will get you business. Okay, so find your voice, and the next point is, uh, I'm sorry, there was one last point, which is Flickr. Flickr, I, I know many people that get lots of leads from Flickr. I personally don't. But uh, I know, I have a friend photographer who's been selling a lot of fan art prints through Flickr, got some great deals because he's really there. I, what, what I would, I, I'm like a big 500px person. Like my main thing is YouTube, 500px and Facebook. Find your own voice. Okay, tip number seven. Post at least three times per week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, try to avoid the weekend. Per my experience, I get better results uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it's really important. Whether it's YouTube videos or it's blogging or it's Facebook, be consistent. Three times per week minimum. And know that it's going to take a few, few months before you get there. But it's very, very important. Next. Now, this is more like a philosophical point. Realize that you cannot count on somebody else doing your sales or marketing for you. Do it yourself first and then help will come. Uh, today I have a webmaster and I have somebody who takes care of my marketing. I've got two agents, one in Europe, one here in the US, which is great. But at first I was doing it by myself. And once you've done it to a certain degree and you start making a living, you will get contacted by agents. You will get contacted by agencies. A lot of things will happen. Uh, you know, it just, it takes you to really attract attention and be there as a photographer and be persistent, posting all the time. Like when I see somebody on Facebook posting constantly good work, I know this is somebody I would like to hire as a photographer because, you know, he is consistent and he's posting all the time. And that's really what professionals are doing. But first, if you are hoping, I know many photographers come to me like, oh, I don't want to do all this marketing nonsense and, and sales nonsense. And, you know, do you have any idea of an agent that could do somebody that could do this for me? And honestly, I always tell them, do it yourself. Even it's going to be a few months, but you have to do it yourself. And then you will see something will happen where you will either have the money to hire somebody or somebody or, you know, you'll get an agent or something like this. Or something that like this can come along. Uh, next, this was, is interesting. Attract attention. Your potential income is proportional to the quantity of attention you can attract. And that's very important. Uh, and it's funny because... I, I made some really good deals just because I'm known as a YouTuber. Galleries, fine art books, uh, commercial work, uh, movies, many things happened to me in my life which I did not expect come from YouTube or Facebook because just I was attracting attention. And this is something that I've observed uh, with artists. More they attract attention, more they get business. So don't be shy, get out there and communicate. And the last is persist. Uh, it's, there's nothing like, you know, Steve Jobs used to say, do what you love and you'll be good at it. And I really strongly believe in that. If uh, I've been a salesman for most of my life and I did not really like it, 
and now I make a living as a photographer and I'm so happy about it. But it took some persistence. It didn't happen overnight, you know. 25 videos on YouTube, it took me years to get a good portfolio on Paris. Persist. If, he, if it's really what you want to do, you will find the energy to persist. But don't give up because you did three YouTube videos or 10 blog articles and nothing happened for you. It's going to take a bit of time. It's like, you know, I always think as like you're pushing a... A, a car or a truck something you know at first it's really heavy and then when it starts rolling it just rolls and rolls and rolls so there is you know at at first it takes some, some kind of efforts voila that was my 10 best tips on starting to make money as a photographer i hope this was any uh, of any help for you guys and um you know also know that lightroom cc just came out and you know I want to also promote my own Lightroom CC training, which I've done in a complete new unit of time for that version with exclusive photos. So here is a little trainer and thank you for being there. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm happy to announce that Lightroom CC is out as well as my Lightroom CC full training. It's almost seven hours of videos where I'm gonna take you through the entire software. First, how to organize, import, sort your photos, use the new face detection option to find very fast portraits of people. Then we're going to spend a lot of time in the retouching modules with nine full workflows, including panoramas, HDR, beauty shot, lifestyle portrait, dramatic black and white, selective colors, split toning effects. I'm going to show you also how to create presets and how to install them. We're going to look at the whole map module. Then we're going to make a book and a slideshow on New York using the photos I've been shooting over the last year. I will then show you the print module and how to print from Lightroom and the brand new HTML5 web galleries to show your work to the world. This training includes over 20 exclusive raw files, high resolution files that you will get as part of the training, never used before, never shown before. I hope you love it. Here is my Lightroom CC full training.